Hey there, and welcome to this video. Today's trip is a special one as I'll be trying out brand new Canadian low-cost carrier Lynxair on their first flight from Calgary to Toronto. Lynxair launched operations on April 7th, 2022 from their home base in Calgary, Alberta, with their first route from Calgary to Vancouver. Just four days later, on April 11th, I'm booked to fly on the inaugural flight of their second route from Calgary to Toronto. Lynx's mission is to make travel more affordable for all Canadians, with a similar ultra-low-cost business model to Flair and Swoop, both of which have been serving Canadian markets for a few years now. The airline was founded by WestJet founder Tim Morgan, who also serves as the Chief Operations Officer, and Marin MacArthur, former Tiger Air CEO, serves as the President and CEO at Lynx. Starting off this trip report the night prior to the flight, I'm checking in online and downloading my boarding pass. Like other low-cost airlines, Lynx offers incredibly cheap fares, but with no extras like carry-ons or check baggage included. On a base ticket, all that's included is a single personal item for storage under the seat in front. This model of paying for only what you need certainly benefits those who can pack lightly and don't mind getting assigned a random seat. I, on the other hand, am not one of those people, and for this flight I added one carry-on bag for $40 Canadian, and priority boarding for $10.50, and selected a window seat in row 5 close to the front of the aircraft for $21. The fare itself was $60, including the taxes and fees, with the total damage altogether coming to $132.49 Canadian. Not bad for a three and a half hour flight across Canada. It's also interesting to note that while both the personal item and carry-on bag do have maximum dimension requirements, there are no maximum weight requirements. Though I didn't opt to purchase a checked bag, on this route the cost would be $50 during online booking with a maximum weight of 23 kilograms, which is fairly standard. It's also worth noting that the prices for carry-on and checked baggage do vary by route and are cheaper when added during booking versus during online check-in or at the airport. Unlike Flair Airlines who charge for check-in at the airport in an effort to persuade people to check-in online prior to the flight, Lynx does not charge for check-in at the airport. Even with that in mind, I still decided to check-in online, which opens up 24 hours before the flight departure time. At the Lynx counters here at Calgary Airport, sandwiched between Air Canada and Flair, there are three Lynx desks along with some baggage sizers. There are also some self-serve kiosks here as well, but the only airline option is Air Transat, so travelers looking to check in for Lynx do have to visit the counter. This may be because Lynx is brand new and they simply haven't been added to the machines yet. It's 8.15am right now and taking a look at the departures board, my flight to Toronto is Lynx Flight 109 with a scheduled departure time of 10.35am from gate A18. Since the Lynx counters are super close to the security checkpoint for the B gates, I'll clear security here and then walk to the A gates after security. The A, B, and C concourses are all used for flights within Canada and are all connected post-security, so you can access any one of them using either the A, B, or C security checkpoints. The security line at checkpoint B was quite deceiving as it looks very empty until you turn the corner and are suddenly trapped in a massive zigzagging line. Total time from entry to exit was 40 minutes, but thankfully I left myself tons of extra time this morning. Exiting security in front of concourse B, there's a station here for the YYC Link shuttle which runs between the different concourses. It's less than a 5 minute walk over to the A concourse from here though, so I opted to put my legs to work instead. On the walk over to my gate, some of the sights to take in are the occasional passing Link shuttle and the WestJet aircraft that fill the tarmac at Calgary Airport. At the entrance to Concourse A, we have another departures board and a massive, very retro looking food court with tons of different options for a quick bite. You can also see the exit to the A security checkpoint here, and that's got me wondering if the line for that screening point is as long as it was for checkpoint B. Walking down concourse A, you have your airport staples like Tim Hortons, Chili's, and Starbucks. There's also a Jugo Juice at the head of the concourse near my gate. There's a washroom located towards the end of the concourse as well, and water filling stations at three different points along the concourse. 
Gate A18 is down towards the end of Concourse A, which is a very open and bright area with tons of massive windows giving great views out onto the airport tarmac. A18 is tucked in the right corner with ample seating and charging stations located at some seats. Taking a look at the aircraft taking me to Toronto today, I'll be on board this brand new Lynx Air Boeing 7378 MAX, which was delivered to the airline from Boeing in March 2022. This flight to Toronto today is the first passenger carrying flight for this particular aircraft, so it truly is a brand new plane. Lynx's fleet consists solely of Boeing 737 MAXs, and as of April 2022, they had taken delivery of three of these aircraft, with an additional 43 aircraft on order. Yes, 43! I was stunned to see how many aircraft they had ordered, and I'm excited to see their rapid expansion as they take delivery of more of them. Boarding is due to get started at 9.55am, 40 minutes prior to the scheduled departure time. It's 9.40 a.m. now, and the gate area is filling up. At the counter, we've got Lynx Air CEO Marin MacArthur, who will be joining us on board today's flight, along with some other Lynx executives, including Chief Commercial Officer Vijay Bathija, who are traveling to Toronto for the press event at Pearson Airport following this inaugural flight. About 10 minutes prior to boarding time, MacArthur addressed all the passengers in the gate area to welcome everyone to today's special flight. Uh, at least we have a transparent a la carte pricing model, so you only pay for what you want and nothing more. So we want to save you some money and, um, and possibly a stomach ache by not offering any airline food on board. So if you think you might get pinkish on the flight, I suggest you pop over to Starbucks or one of the other vendors here to grab a bite to eat and take it on board with you. We also don't have entertainment um, on the flight, so uh, hopefully you're on good terms with person sitting next to you. Alternatively, uh, you might want to download and power up your devices before you get on board. Thanks very much for choosing links and we're looking forward to flying with you today. Following her announcement, she helped hand out cupcakes to all the passengers in the boarding area. A special treat for today's flight, and not a regular occurrence on board Lynx, she assured us. Prior to the beginning of boarding, the gate agents asked any passengers who had checked in online and not at the airport to come up to the gate to have their proof of vaccination against COVID-19 verified, as is a requirement of Transport Canada for all air travel within Canada. Other airlines, like Air Canada, have the capacity within their online check-in platforms to submit your proof of vaccination there and have it verified, something Lynx will hopefully launch soon to streamline the process. Boarding got underway at 9.58am for those who purchased priority boarding and for those who need extra time to board the aircraft. Stepping on board, the first thing I noticed, aside from the very blue cabin interior, was that new plain smell. I'm loving this very simple, but clean-cut looking cabin. I'm booked in seat 5A for this flight, which is the window seat on the left side of the aircraft. Lynx has three different pricing categories for seat selection, which are those ahead of the overwing exit row, those behind it, and those classified as an exit row or Lynx Plus seat, which feature extra legroom. For this flight, seats ahead of the overwing exit row cost $21 Canadian to select, while those after the overwing exit row cost $15.75. Exit row seats or Lynx Plus seats cost $47.25 to select. Lynx's Boeing 737 MAX are in an all-economy configuration with no premium cabin offering. Each seat has a blue, leather-covered surface, a very simple design with no padded headrest. You'll also notice that the seats are extremely slimline, which means they take up less space and are extremely light. The armrests in between the seats are all movable, including the ones between the window seat and the wall. Every seat is also fixed in place and has no recline capability, which is honestly kind of nice as you know that no one in front of you will recline their chair. On an overnight flight, however, I wouldn't be so happy about this feature, or lack thereof. Looking at the legroom in the seat row, I'm a fairly average 5 foot 10 inches and fit very comfortably in these seats with a little extra room for my knees. The space under the seats in front is also quite good, with no obstructions blocking the way for whatever you try to store there. I was able to fit my backpack under the seat with no issue. 
There's space in the overhead bins for storing carry-on bags as well, and my standard size rollerboard bag fit up there with no issue. These bins, however, don't seem to be as large as those on some other 737 Maxes, such as Air Canada's, where rollerboard bags can be stored on their side. Given the hefty charge for an additional carry-on, however, I don't imagine these bins filling up quite as quickly as they do on Air Canada flights, so space may not be as much of an issue. Looking at the seat back in front, you'll notice that there are no entertainment screens at any of these seats. Lynx does not offer any form of onboard entertainment, and in her announcement prior to boarding, CEO Marin MacArthur recommended striking up a conversation with your neighbour instead. Lower down on the seat back, we have the tray table which folds out, and is also mounted on rails such that it can slide outwards towards you. Below the tray table, there's a pouch for storing the provided reading materials, along with any other items you wish to put here. In terms of what's provided at the seat, we have the safety information card for the Boeing 737 MAX 8, and surprisingly, no air sickness bags. Though I didn't inquire, I have to say, I'm wondering if those are a paid add-on. Each seat also has a small coat hook on the side near the top. On the panel above the seat, we have personal reading lights for each seat, along with personal adjustable air conditioning vents and an attendant call button for the row. Taking a look at the view out the window, in this seat I have access to two full windows, with great views looking out ahead of the left engine and wing. Welcome aboard this uh, inaugural flight for uh, Lynx Air 109 to Toronto. Joining me on the flight deck uh, this morning is uh, Captain uh, Mark Griffin. Our fantastic cabin crew team is led by our in charge, Leanne. Assisting her in the uh, cabin, three of uh, Lynx Air's finest, Antonio, Jose, and Dr. Uh, Expecting just a few bumps at the lower levels due to the gusty surface winds and then should be mostly a smooth en route. After the initial announcement from the cockpit welcoming everyone on board, we were informed that there would be a 5-10 to 10 minute delay leaving the gate as the ground crew finish up loading the rest of the bags. Shouldn't be much of an issue to make up that time en route however, assuming the delay is as short as advertised. <laughs> 10.42am now, the jet bridge is detached and we're pushing back from gate A18, just 7 minutes behind schedule. Place the mask over your nose and mouth, securing it behind your head with the- Thank you for choosing to fly with Lynx Air as a part of your journey today. Please let the cabin crew know if you have any questions or safety concerns. We hope you enjoy your flight. Nous espérons que vous apprécierez votre vol. As a result of COVID-19, your cabin crew completed this safety demonstration wearing a face covering. Should the oxygen mask drop from the panel above you, remove your face covering, don the oxygen mask, and follow the procedures just demonstrated. Thank you. Beginning our taxi over to runway 35 right, we're in the taxi line behind a couple of the low-cost competitors, but also managed to catch a glimpse of another Lynx Air 737 MAX taxiing into its gate on Concourse A after arriving from Vancouver.
captain has left the seat belt sign on. For your continued safety, please ensure your seat belts are securely fastened. And After liftoff at 11.07 a.m., we're climbing away from Calgary and rocketing up to our cruising altitude of 39,000 feet, while slowly beginning our turn east towards Toronto. I love these seats ahead of the wing, as the engines are mesmerizing to watch, and that's about the extent of the in-flight entertainment we'll be getting on this three and a half hour flight. Views from on board the 737 MAX are made even better by the huge windows, which are equipped with standard pull-down window shades. These windows let in tons of natural light, which helps give the cabin that bright feel. Shortly after takeoff, CEO Marin MacArthur made an announcement about today's in-flight service, including a special gift for every passenger, and letting us know that there will be a celebration on arrival in Toronto, and inviting everyone to stick around for it. The special gift, a pair of bright red Lynx and Boeing branded sunglasses. Water was also served as the sunglasses were distributed, which I was pleasantly surprised by, as I honestly wasn't expecting anything to be offered on this flight. It is important to note, however, that Lynx does not sell any other food or drink on any of their flights. Taking a walk to the back of the cabin, you can see that Lynx's 737 MAX are in a 3-3 seating configuration, which is the standard seating arrangement on all Boeing 737s. They pack in 189 seats, which is quite a high density configuration, since there is no premium cabin. I love the color matching between the floors, seats, and the ceiling lighting, as opposed to having a mismatch of different colors. I think the blue is a nice, fairly neutral color, as opposed to some of the more neon colors found on other low-cost airlines, such as the yellows of Europe's Ryanair. These aircraft also feature Boeing's Sky Interior, which aims to give the cabin an open and airy feel, with high and accent-lit curved ceilings. In terms of onboard lavatories, there are two lavatories at the back of the aircraft, and another lavatory located near the front. The lavatories are quite small, with only enough room to pivot, but this is a common theme on all Boeing 737 MAXs, and not just those of Lynx. Back at my seat, we've got over two hours still until our arrival in Toronto, so I'm going to settle into my seat and get some work done. As you can see, it's a bit tight using a large laptop in these seats. With no recline function though, it's also nice knowing that the person in front of you won't suddenly rock their seat back and crush your laptop that's pressed up against it. Another very important note is that none of the seats onboard Lynx's 737 MAXs have in-seat power. No AC power outlets, nor any USB charging ports, so if you plan to use your devices on the flight, make sure they're charged up beforehand. Cruising high above the west end of Lake Superior now, just over the halfway point in today's flight. With about an hour to go until arrival, Lynx Air Chief Commercial Officer Vijay Bathija, former Etihad and Air Canada Rouge executive, made an announcement about today's inaugural flight, and that as a part of the celebration, all Lynx flights to Toronto are currently on sale for 50% off the regular price. Up to 50% off on all the flights to Toronto. So, please, if you want to book your summer vacation or any further trips, feel free to use the promo code Toronto to save and book your front flights. Thank you. Shortly after that announcement, Cabin Crew offered yet another water service. Lynx, you have truly outdone yourself. Veuillez attacher votre ceinture de sécurité, redresser le dossier de votre siège ainsi que la tablette du siège devant vous. Assurez-vous que vos bagages de cabine sont bien rangés. 40 minutes to go now until arrival and I'm closing up my laptop just in time too as my battery is starting to run low. Attention. 
Attention everyone, the captain has turned the seatbelt sign on. Please ensure that you are seated with your seatbelt fastened and refrain from moving. Control the minutes, we should be touching down just a few minutes uh, behind schedule. We did manage to uh, make up a little... An announcement from the cockpit that we'll be touching down just a few minutes behind schedule at 4.30pm local time, as we did manage to make up some time en route. A very cloudy day here in southern Ontario as we make our final approach to runway 06 right. with your seat belt fastened and carry on baggage stowed until the air After touchdown at 4:29 p.m., we're now taxiing over to gate D37 on Pearson Airport's Terminal 1. I was surprised to learn that Lynx is operating from Terminal 1 here at Toronto Pearson as traditionally most low-cost carriers in recent years have used Terminal 3 for their operations. With the launch of this flight, Lynx Air is only the second airline to use the domestic section at Terminal 1, as the sole occupant prior to this was Air Canada. Oh yeah, we're supposed to be in the bathroom, huh? I won't be able to see, so... As we disembark, there's a small ceremony planned here at the gate prior to the return flight to Calgary, as mentioned by the CEO on board. There's a refreshment station and some more cupcakes. Thanks for joining me for this trip, and now for some comments on the experience. While Lynx does offer a similar experience to other low-cost carriers like Flair, I found they stand out in a couple unique and perhaps seemingly small ways. For starters, Lynx does not charge for check-in at the airport, unlike Flair who tack on a fee of $25 plus tax. While this charge does seem totally avoidable if it did exist, I think it makes the experience much more accessible to those who may not be as tech-savvy. Next up, the water service. I've flown Flair in the past and no water was offered on any of those flights, whereas this flight with Lynx involved two separate water services, yet another nice touch. Finally, when it comes to carry-on bags and personal items, Lynx doesn't apply a specific weight requirement and relies solely on the dimensions. This brought me a lot of peace of mind in advance of my trip as I've flown with other low-cost airlines in the past who have strict weight requirements and I feared having to pay extra, which may have influenced me to don a few extra layers of clothing during the boarding process. Overall, I was very happy with the Lynx experience and with such cheap fares, I would recommend them to anyone looking to try them out. From the consumer perspective, more competition is only ever a good thing. But with the growing number of ultra-low cost carriers already serving Canadians and more looking to launch operations, it will be interesting to see whether they all manage to coexist. Nonetheless, I'm excited that we now have another player in the Canadian aviation market and look forward to seeing Lynx grow and take their piece of the pie.